Hello everyone. In this lecture today, I'm going to talk to you about what is Sandwich ELISA? What is the principle of Sandwich ELISA? And what is the process involved in Sandwich ELISA? So first, what is Sandwich ELISA? Sandwich ELISA is a type of ELISA that quantifies antigens between the two antibodies layers. The two antibodies that are used in Sandwich ELISA are called capture antibody and detection antibody. Okay, so uh, the antigen to be measured, this must contain at least two antigenic epitope uh, that is capable of binding to the antibody since at least two antibodies act in the sandwich ELISA. Okay, uh, let's talk about why sandwich ELISA is called sandwich ELISA. As you can see in this picture, uh, this is uh, an example of a sandwich, typical sandwich, where we have two piece, pieces of the bread and in, in between there is the filling. Similarly, in sandwich ELISA, we have one antibody that is called capture antibody. Uh, this is capture antibody and the other antibody, this is called detection antibody, okay? Detection antibody and in between, here in between as you can see, this is the antigen, okay? This is the antigen. So it is exactly like the sandwich so in, in the middle, in the middle is the antigen, uh, whereas on the sides, on top and on, on the bottom are two antibodies, capture antibody and detection antibody, okay? So uh, what is the advantage of Sandwich ELISA over other ELISA is that the sample does not need to be purified before analysis. This is one advantage. Another advantage is that the assay or the sandwich ELISA method can be very sensitive and robust because here we use two antibodies. One is capture antibody and the other is detection antibody. This increases sensitivity as well as robustness. Okay, so how much more times it is sensitive? Up to two to four, five times more sensitive uh, than direct or indirect ELISA. So now what are the steps? involved in sandwich ELISA. What we do first, first we coat the plate, okay? So first we pre-coat the plate with the capture antibody, okay? So after pre-coating the plate with the capture antibody, we block non-specific binding sites, okay? With the blocking buffer. And in the next step, what we do, we add the sample containing the antigen, okay? And after this step, what happens that the capture antibody is shown here, this capture antibody, it binds to the antigen, okay? It binds to the specific antigen uh, with very high specificity, okay? So, and in the next step, what happens is that the primary detection antibody binds to the antigen. So, we add primary detection antibody. So, this is primary detection antibody and this binds to the antigen forming a sandwich. So here we have capture antibody in between the antigen and this is the detection antibody. So this gives the structure of the sandwich. And in the next step, so this is the primary detection antibody. So we use secondary antibody that is biotin labeled secondary antibody. So this is biotin labeled secondary antibody. This is biotin labeled and this binds to the primary antibody, okay, primary detection antibody, okay. So then after this step, what do we do in the final step? We add streptavidin, the substrate streptavidin, HRPO, that binds to the biotin and catalyzes a color reaction, okay. So you can, you can see here that after addition of the substrate, the color uh, product is formed. So the higher the intensity, the higher the intensity of the color, the higher the amount of antigen present, okay? So the lower the intensity of the color, lower the amount of antigen present, okay? So the intensity of the color indicates the amount of antigen present in the sample. Thank you.